with Jesus, and this is one of those days. Hey, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, okay? You ought to be happy. You ought to be glad to be here this morning, to think about being in the house of God, a day that you can come and praise him, worship him. Hey, just just do it, do it, do it. That's all you got to do is just do it. And Hey, don't endure it. Just enjoy it, okay? Let's open in prayer. Father, we come to you, and we do thank you for this day. And Lord, as I thank on our veterans, as I as I think about our honoring them today, Lord, I thank you for the sacrifice that they made. Lord, I thank you for what they have given up and, and, and for our freedom and, and for the love of their country. And Lord, I ask you just to watch over them, watch over their families, Lord, those who are in, in foreign countries right now in battle, maybe even. Lord, I ask you just to watch over them in a very special way. But Lord, now as we come to worship and praise you today, let us open our minds and our hearts to, to the word of God today. Let us sing these old songs of Zion to lift up and worship you. Thank you for the opportunity we have to be here. Lord, we don't take it lightly. We thank you for, again, the freedom we have to be in this house. We certainly love you, and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Brother Mike, go ahead. Good morning. It's good to see you in this Veterans Day. Well, I think it's past, but we commemorate today. So we are grateful for all the brave men and women that have served this country and are serving this country. That because of them, we can still have these freedoms. Because of God, of course, but God has provided this country with good men and women to stand up for these rights, and that we are grateful for. Amen. Let's start with page uh, 345 on our hymnal. Where could I go? Where could I go? But the Lord. <laughs> Live and be in this old sinful world.
All right, if the congregation could please stand this morning, please stand. We're going to have the presentation of the colors, and if Brother George is in here, he's on his way down. Come on out, Brother George. Very good. Well, we uh, appreciate the honor guard from the Army National Guard. Uh, my contact there was Sergeant Holtzlander, and I appreciate him uh, doing this. This is probably the second year at least that I've, I've called on him, and he's provided us with three gentlemen here. Uh, Sergeant Christopher Mann, uh, Specialist Michael Harris, and Specialist Kenneth Rutherford. So we appreciate them. They are our honor guard. So at this time, uh, we'll have the presentation. Present the colors. This time the national anthem will be played. We'll have the pledge to the Bible. Attention, salute, and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. And to our American flag. Attention, salute, and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we'll uh, retire the colors. Post the colors. Color guard may retire. Congregation may be seated.
my country tis of the sweet land of liberty of the Our fathers, God, to thee, author of liberty, to thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God our King. down they're going to make their way down you can find someone around you and greet them tell them if they're a veteran happy veterans day and uh, just say hello to them all right
I'm glad everyone's had an opportunity to shake hands with each other and, and greet each other this morning. It's a wonderful thing. I want to thank the uh, military for Hello. Hello. All right. Now, I want to thank the military uh, for providing the uh, honor guard this morning. They were Sergeant Christopher Mann, uh, Specialist Michael Harris, and Specialist Kenneth Rutherford. And I do thank uh, Sergeant Holtzlander, who's the contact there uh, every year. He's done that for me for several years, and I appreciate him and thank him for it. And thank them for their service, all of them. <clears throat> so <clears throat> at this time, um, let's see where I am on the agenda. <laughs> I'm supposed to make some comments about Veterans Day, and I think I can handle that. You know, the history of Veterans Day. Veterans Day is an official United States public holiday. It's observed annually on November the 11th, and it honors military veterans, that is, persons who have or are now serving in the United States Armed Forces. While uh, Memorial Day honors those who died while in military service, Veterans Day celebrates the service of all U.S. military veterans. Uh, Remembrance poppies are traditional. We've done those in the past, but, uh, at, you know, I didn't want to overdo it. <laughs> So not do it every year, but uh, we'll probably do that maybe next year. I don't know. But they are distributed by the American Legion, and they're worn on, vet on uh, Veterans Day. Uh, but this tradition was inspired by the World War I poem called In Flanders Field. It was written by John McCary, McCray, and uh, the poppy was used to commemorate the American soldiers killed in World War I. That was 1914 to 1918. The VFW conducted the first <clears throat> nationwide distribution of remember remembrance poppies before Memorial Day in 1922. Today, the American Legion Auxiliary distributes the poppies around Memorial Day and Veterans Day. The remembrance poppies are mostly used in the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand uh, to commemorate their service and uh, service men and women who, who were killed in conflicts. They're also, they are used to a lesser extent here in the United States. Uh, and it's interesting to note, though, that all the countries that adopted the, the remembrance poppy were the victors in World War I little history there. But at this time, though, we'd like to recognize all of our veterans by asking them to stand as their branch of service is a uh, theme song is played on the video screens. Over the hill, over the dale, we will hit the dusty trail and those things. 
think we're going to have a, a song for the offering right now. Well, thank you to all of them who have served. Thank you to all of those who are still serving. Because of you, we can still have the freedoms that God and do this country with. And trust me, they're not free. They're not free. You are paying and have paid for them. So thank you from uh, Proud American. Proud to be an American. Tell me that. Amen. Let's sing a page 212 on our hymnal. The Eastern Gate. We'll sing uh, verse 2 and verse 4 uh, before the ushers come forth and receive their offering this morning. I will meet you in the morning just inside the eastern gate. Then be ready, faithful pilgrim, lest with you it be too late. I will meet you, I will meet you just inside the eastern gate over there. I will meet you, I will meet you, I will meet you in the morning over there. Oh, the joy of that glad meeting with the saints who for us wait. What a blessed happy meeting just inside the eastern gate I will meet you I will meet you I will meet you inside the eastern gate I will meet you I will meet you I will meet you in the morning over there sorry Sorry, I get, I get overwhelmed, I'm telling you. Times like this, it overwhelms me to, to live in a country so blessed by God. We of all people, of all people, ought, ought to be happy and grateful. You know, God has been so good to us. 
Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful today, Lord, for all you've done for us, Lord, how much you have blessed this country, Lord. It is uh, just a miracle from your hand, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all of us who have the privilege to live in this country, Lord. Father, it may not be what it used to be, Lord, but we still have your blessings. And, Lord, we're better off than many, many on the face of this earth. So we thank you. Thank you, Lord. And, Father, as we meet together here this morning, Father, let us, let us be reminded, Lord, of how good you are and you have been to this country and to all of us individually, Lord. And as we count our individual basis, our individual blessings, Lord, let us be faithful in our giving to you of our tithe, our time. And, Father, I know that the scripture says that people are willing to give because, first, they give themselves to you. And, Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for all you've done for us, Lord. Bless the service, Lord. Bless the preaching of your word. Thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 In the United States, November 11th is recognized as Veterans Day. What is Veterans Day? Why is it celebrated on November 11th? In the early morning hours of November 11, 1918, the Allied Powers, which included France, Great Britain, the United States, and many others, agreed with Germany to end the fighting during World War I. Later that day, an official armistice, or ceasefire, was signed. In fact, the armistice was signed in Paris at 11 a.m. on November 11, 1918 the eleventh hour of the eleventh day of the eleventh month. This date was almost instantly recognized as being an important one. The following year, in 1919, many nations declared November 11th a national holiday. The day became known as Armistice Day and honored those who had died during the war. Many nations still honor Armistice Day and the focus of the holiday is placed on soldiers who have lost their lives, similar to the American holiday of Memorial Day. There are several different traditions associated with Armistice Day. For example, some nations still observe a moment of silence, usually for two minutes, at 11 o'clock in the morning. The first minute is said to honor the millions who died during World War I. The second minute is for the living who were also affected by the war, including wives, parents, and children. There are also significant ceremonies which take place in South Africa and Australia, as both nations were profoundly impacted by World War I. In South Africa, they observe the moment in darkness as well as silence. In Australia, instead of 11 o'clock a.m., they observe their moment of silence at 9 o'clock p.m. This is because at 9 o'clock p.m. in Australia, it is 11 o'clock a.m. in Paris. In other nations, the nature and focus of the holiday changed after the conclusion of World War II. At that point, Great Britain began referring to the day as Remembrance Day. In America, the holiday became Veterans Day. However, in the United States, Veterans Day has grown to recognize all of those who have served their country, whether living or dead, and even honors those still serving. A World War II veteran, Raymond Weeks, was the first to propose the notion of recognizing all veterans on this day. He approached Dwight Eisenhower with the idea, and it was eventually presented as a bill before Congress. Veterans Day was recognized as an official holiday on May 26, 1954. Today, Raymond Weeks is remembered by some as the father of Veterans Day. At first, Veterans Day continued to be celebrated on November 11th. However, in 1971, it was briefly moved to the fourth Monday in October. It remained on that day until 1978, when it was returned to the November 11th date. Today, Veterans Day is recognized across the United States and is observed on the 11th of November each year. Americans all over the country join with many others around the world to honor those who have served in the military.
about veterans. It's called Another Soldier's Coming Home. While I'm singing, uh, I'm hoping that there will be some pictures of our veterans uh, that have either still here or passed on the screens. <clears throat> Before I do, there was a poem that I've come across. It was found on a dead soldier at Gettysburg. It says, I asked God for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I asked for help that I might do great things. I was given infirmities that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. And I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. And I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I was given nothing that I had asked for, but everything I had hoped for. Despite myself, my prayers were answered. I am among most men most richly blessed. <clears throat> Yellow. Yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> okay, I, I presume you're playing... His back is bent and weary, his voice is tired and low. His sword is worn from battle, and his steps have gotten slow. But he used to walk on water, for it seemed that way to me. I know he moved some mountains, and never left his knees. Strike up the band, assemble the choir, another soldier's coming home, another warrior hears the call. He's waited for so long. He'll battle no more, cause he's won his wars. I'm sure heaven's table has room for at least one more. Sing a welcome song. Another soldier's coming home. He faced the winds of sorrow, but his heart knew no retreat. He walked in narrow places, knowing Christ knew no defeat. But now his steps turn homeward, so much closer to the prize. He's sounding kind of homesick, there's a longing in his eyes. Strike up. The band assemble the choir. Another soldier's coming home. Another warrior hears the call. He's waited for so long. He'll battle no more. On his wars, I'm sure Herman's table 
has room for at least one more. Sing a welcome song. Another soldier's coming home. Sing a welcome song. Sing a song. Another soldier's coming home. This time I think the pastor has something to say. Brother George put all this together in a in a matter of just a short time. He's got a pretty you know, pretty full plate. Miss Linda was out here at Adam's place, and uh, y'all pray for her, pray for him as he's uh, taking care of her and trying to see the things of God's business as well. Thank you, Brother George, for that. If you take your Bibles, this is not going to be a Veterans Day message. I will not apologize for that after you hear how it came about. But I was awakened Thursday morning at 540 in the morning. And I was asking God, I said, God, give me something. Give me something to feed your people with. And I was went into my desk and sat down and opened my Bible. It took me to Psalms. And as I looked, I was looking at the pages and the verses and all that. Where do you want me? To, where do you want me to go, Lord? Because this is Psalm 95, 96, 97, 98, 98, 99, 100, 101. He said Psalms 100. So I want to ask you this morning: What did you bring with you? What did you bring with you? As I sat there and I looked at the scripture in Psalms 100. And most of you know it by heart. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he has made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into thy gates with thanksgiving. And into thy, hey, courts of praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. And we might put in parentheses right there, for the Lord is good all the time. The Lord is good. His mercy, his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. There's some things that you need to bring to church with you. And this passage of scripture tells us exactly what they are. And I, and I wanted to argue with the Lord. I wanted to say, Brother Silas, this is not appropriate. We're going to honor veterans. But I don't ever want to get in a box, Brother, Brother Michael. You never want to put yourself in a box. So the Lord said, preach this. So we're going to preach this. But a lot of people bring a lot of things to church with them. They bring candy and snacks, drinks, and, and toys for the kids. I've seen people reading books other than the Bible, <laughs> while the sermon was being preached. Some think it's time to balance their checkbook or get their calendar up. Others bring their nail clippers and trim their fingernails. I hope not their toenails, but their fingernails, okay? But there is something that, hey, we, some of this stuff needs to be left at home. In a positive sense, people bring their, hey, they bring their Bible. That we ought to. If you got yours, you ought to, hey, hold it up and say, yeah, praise God for this right here. This is the Word of God. And that's where we're going. That's where we want to, that's where we want to go when we enter into His presence here. Okay. 
Psalms 100 is a psalm of the future millennium kingdom. It describes, it describes what worship is going to be like in that day when the Lord Jesus Christ reigns in glory and power, okay? As Brother Jim says all the time, every day will be Sunday, and it will be. We're not, we're not in that glorious time right now. But we are a part of the family of God, okay? And we're commanded to gather ourselves together and worship him in his house. Hebrews 10, 24. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more and so much more and so much more as you see the day approaching. That day is those final days. And it's coming, y'all. We're right around the corner. So with all that in mind, I want to preach for just a little bit on what did you bring with you? What did you bring with you this morning? Let's pray. Father, again this morning we approach your throne. Lord, we lift up the families of those who gave, who their, their loved one gave it all for our freedom. We don't want to forget about them. And yet we honor those who are still present or have been in the military and served and sacrificed, left their families, left their families, gave it, gave, gave some, but didn't give it all. Thank you, Lord, for them. And as we thank on them, I thank on their families. They sacrificed as well. Thank you that we can assemble here today in your presence. And Lord, just see what you want us to bring when we come in assembly here. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, first thing I put down, verses 1 and 2, so make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. First thing, hey, bring the right spirit. Bring the right spirit. And it says here to bring a shouting spirit. We're told to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Uh, let's break that, let's just break that down a little bit. First thing, that word make. That word make means make music. We've already done that. We've already done that this morning. We've made music. Uh, that's why we that's why we do that. That's why in, in every service we have a hymn or a song or a special, whatever before the preaching is to prepare the preacher to prepare your hearts to prepare for the for the service the message but it says to make a make a, a joyful noise okay singing of the psalms okay second it says a joyful that word joyful means to give a, a public confession of the of the attributes and the work of God thirdly it says uh, no the word noise to raise a shout refers to, again, a ringing cry, a ringing cry, a cry that, that pierces your eardrums. Think about it. Pierces your eardrums. When all these things are put together, we can see, we can see that, the, that the psalmist is calling his people to the Lord to raise, raise their anthem of praise, hey, from their hearts to the Lord. This is a challenge, a, jal a challenge to participate in public praise for God's, hey, for, for God and his work. If you go to Psalms, and we're out right there, just go back to Psalms 40 real quick. Psalms 40. Find it myself. Yeah, Psalms 40, okay. Look at verses, look at verses 1 through 3. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard, heard, my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the mire clay. Uh, look here. And set my feet on a rock and, and established my goings. And he hath put in, look here, a new song in my mouth. E -A, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it. I like that. And fear and shall trust in the Lord. Said this, this says here that he put a new song in my heart, in my mouth. In my, hey, 
no longer am I going to be singing, hey, singing those songs uh, of the world and living on those songs of the world. I'm going to be singing the songs of the Lord who, who, who sought me and bought me and brought me out uh, and put my feet on, uh, hey, on, on solid ground. The right spirit is a spirit of shouting. Remember, genuine praise is always going to be vocal, it's going to be visible, and it's going to be public. There's nothing wrong with raising your hand in praise to the Lord. I know a lot of us old fogies, we, we sit on ours. We keep our mouth shut like we're afraid somebody's going to say something, you know. We, or we'll break our jaw if we praise God. We said amen, okay. Well, hey, we get, to, we get the opportunity while we're in here to glorify God, y'all. And, and, and when we hold back, he, he doesn't like it. He doesn't like it. He wants us to praise him. He wants us to say hallelujah, amen, praise God. He wants to hear it. Look at verse 2a, uh, serve in spirit. The word serve means to be in bondage to. It refers to doing whatever, whatever the master tells the slave to do. It means to be in, at his beck and call, no matter what. When we got saved, we became the Lord's property. 1 Corinthians 8, 20, hey, uh, 6, 20. For you for you're bought with a price. Yes, you were a high price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Therefore, we are to do what he tells us to do without question or hesitation. Without question or hesitation. Folks don't like that. Here's the problem with folks. They don't like people telling them what, what to do. The men in here that served in the military, hey, we didn't ask questions. <laughs> Brother Mike, you didn't ask, well, well, now, sir, I, I'd rather not do that today. I, no, no, that ain't the way that went. Brother Robert, that ain't the way that went. You you didn't like them telling you what to do, but they they did it and you did it, Okay. If you don't like that, though, you're not going to like this next one. It says it for us to serve him with gladness. That little word means mirth. And that word means, and that word means gladness, uh, accompanied with laughter, joyful laughter. This verse tells us that we are to, to, serve, to serve the Lord with laughter. We're to come in here with a smile on our face. We're to leave here with a smile on our face, too. But we're to come here to serve the Lord with a smile on our face. We're, we're, we're to be so filled with the love of him that regardless of what he is asking us to do, we're tickled to death to do it. We're tickled to death to do it. See, that's the attitude that David had in his heart over in Psalms 122, 1, when he said, I was glad. Did you hear that? He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You ought to be glad when you when Sunday morning comes. You ought to want to get up early. Hey, get up early. Get ready for it. Get in prayer. Maybe even get in your Bible. I was telling them this morning over in Sunday school class, it's, it's tough on Sunday morning for me to get in my Bible and spend some time there because of the, of, of the hectic last-minute preparation of everything, making sure everything's in, in order. Make sure everything's right. Hey, this is this is God's house. We want it to be in order. We want it to be right, okay? But to be filled with this, to be filled with this laughter, filled with this joy, filled with this, this hey, this, this want to be here attitude. How many of us are? Word gladness is a pretty interesting word. It really means wide-eyed, hey, wide-eyed with a big old grin. When I think of joy, and I watched some of it last night with those little ones, when I think of joy, uh, I think of a child. When something happens that they like, Brother Mike, you're around it all the time, it affects their whole body. Their mouth flies open. Their eyes get wide. Their face lights up. Their heart hey, and soul are lifted and rejoicing. They just get to shaking almost in joy, in joy. Such should be the delight of ourselves, us old sinners, as we've come, hey, we, we, we get to come here and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. We get to come here and worship the Lord. 
We come here and praise the Lord. Hey, our Redeemer who died for us. Hey, who, who, who hey, brought us out of death, hell, and the grave. Hey, what, by his precious blood, what else would you want to do but just be joyful to him? Be delighted. Be, hey, be, be happy to be here. Again, in verse 2, be part, a singing spirit. Here we're told to approach the Lord with our, with our singing. That little word refers to, again, a ringing cry, the, the shout of joy. Our hearts should be so filled, so filled with the wonder uh, of who he is and what he has done for us, what he has done for us, what he's allowed, hey, even allowed us to do, that we get credit for. I, I, I was talking this morning uh, about my secular world and being in sales and some of the things that I accomplished. It wasn't me accomplishing them. It was God doing it. God did it for me. And and I and I hey I got the I got the accolades, I got the right, I got the bonus check okay, <laughs> I got those things for what God done, what God was doing. See the, the these 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 first two verses tell us that what God is in our hey in your life, and, and we don't we we're, we're not be able to hide it. You you it's kind of like we're talking about the Holy Spirit. You, you people are going to see it. When, when, when Peter and John started in that temple that day and that lame man laying there, he fixed his eyes on them. Wonder why he saw something in them. He saw something they had. Oh, they didn't have money to give him. They didn't have alms to give him. But let me tell you what they did give him. Let me tell you what they did give him. They gave him a new life. They, they gave life to his limbs where he could go out and, and make a living be with his family, et cetera, et cetera. They gave him something. You can't keep, you can't keep, you can't keep God, uh, you can't keep him hid. Uh, I tell the little story, of the story about the little boy who, who went to his mama after he got saved. He said, Mama, I got Jesus in me. And something that big ought to stick out somewhere, you know. Well, he, it does stick out somewhere. People see you. Let me tell you, let me tell you. God, you can't you can't have someone the size of God in your heart without being able to hey let it get out now and then. Let me tell you how it gets out sometimes. The eyes runs out of your eyes. Sometimes it hey it runs out of hey raising your hand. Sometimes it runs out up your, hey through your throat and out your vocal cords and makes you shout. The fact is that you're not able to hide him. You're not able to hide him. If he's in you, you, you people will be able to see it, okay? Look at verse 3. Brings the right submission. Submit to the person of God. It says here that we are told to know, know that the Lord is God. That means to make a, a distinction. We are to know that he and he alone is God. Friend, if you don't have it nailed down this morning, who your God is, let me tell you, is your God, let me ask you, is your God the God of the Bible? Who is, who is your God this morning? You, you, you may wonder how, how, you, how can you know that? Well, the answer is pretty simple. What do you give the most of your time to, your attention to, your money to? Well, if you got to answer that, whatever the answer is, that's your God. That's your God. Think about it. Have you made the right, hey, distinction in acknowledging God Almighty as your God of your life? And by the way, if you, if you ever get it nailed down, Brother Cole, if we can ever get it nailed down in your soul that he is God and he is superior to every other thing and every other person, every other activity of your life, then you'll have no problem, I'm going to tell you, in serving him. You'll have no problem in serving him. That'll be, that'll be what you want to do utmost in your life is serve him. The reason some people have trouble tithing, get into church, just plain serving God is they, hey, they have a different God than the God of the Bible. They have a different God. They're worshiping something else other than the true God of the Bible. You better know it this morning. You better know the God you're worshiping. 
All right, so if you submit to the purpose of God, next we are reminded that we are we're, we're what we are because he has made us. He has made us. This word simply means to, to take some material and fashion something new out of it. You see, God took the clay that was, was me, it was you, it was us, and formed a new creature out of, out, of, out of it by his power and his power alone. Regardless of what, it, hey, what we are this morning, we are what we are, hey, what we are by the power of God. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. But by the grace of God I am what I am. And by grace which was bestowed unto me was, hey, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly. I labored more abundantly. Yet not I, but the grace of God which is with me. You'll labor for him. You'll want to do. You'll want to do. That'll be your burning desire. Without him, you're a zero with the, with the round knocked off of you. You're nothing, absolutely nothing. He, hey, John 15, 5 said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, and I in him, the same bringeth forth, I mentioned this morning, much fruit, much fruit. And without me, you can do absolutely nothing. I can't, you can't, we can't do anything without God. We need to realize this morning that God saved us for a purpose. Everyone in this room, God saved you with a plan in mind for your life. He has a purpose for you. You need to find out what it is. If you don't already know, you need to find out what it is. Because God has that purpose for you. And, and if he had not had a purpose for you once you got saved, He'd have struck you dead. He'd have taken you home. Because there wouldn't have been nothing else for you to hey, to accomplish for him. And it's all about accomplishment for him, not, not for your glory, but for his glory. Hey, he didn't just redeem you to keep you out of hell, y'all. He didn't just redeem you that you might feel good from time to time. He didn't do, hey, he didn't just, hey, do it just to, hey, make you look down your religious nose at your lost neighbor and think of how much better you are than he is. He didn't do it for that reason. He saved us, hey, that we might serve him. Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we, that we should walk in them. He did that because he wants you to walk in those good works. He has a plan for your life. Hey, are you serving him? Are you really doing all you do? Are you really, got, you got a voice to sing the choir? Are you in the choir? Hey, you got, a, you got an ability to teach? Are you teaching? Have you got, hey, knocking on doors? Hey, knocking on doors? Telling people about Jesus? Trying to get them in church? Trying to, hey, trying to lead them to Jesus? Are you doing any of that? Have you got, yeah. Yeah. Let's move on. Submit to the promises of God. It says, we are the sheep of his pasture. This statement simply reminds us that we belong to him. We belong to him. And just as a shepherd looks after his, hey, the welfare of his own, those little sheep, our Lord is always looking out for us. He cares about us. That's how, hey, David had it nailed down. David had it nailed down in Psalms 23. What did he say? The Lord is my shepherd. And he went on to say, I shall not want. You won't want when the Lord is your shepherd. Hey, he was transformed, David was. You have been transformed if you know the Lord is your Savior. He is your shepherd. We, we, hey, we would realize that we, hey, we need him. We need him every moment of the day. We never have a fear as long as we know he's near. And he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Over in Hebrews 13, 5, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Think about that great promise. Think about what he said there. No matter how bad it gets, God is in control. Hey, right? Romans 8, 28, my wife's favorite, hey, my wife's favorite uh, uh, 
Scripture. We know that all things work together. That word all means everything. All things work together for good for them that love God, them who are called according to his purpose. You understand he's in control, right? He's in control of everything. If you're saved, you belong to, hey, you belong to the chief, the great shepherd. And he will take care of every need you have. The problem is we have, hey, many of us, uh, we're not yet, we've not yet learned to trust, trust him. Brother Adrian and I were just talking about it yesterday. We had a conversation about this very topic just yesterday over lunch. Hey, when we pray about a need and then promptly as soon as we get up, we want to meet it. We're going to meet it. We're going to take care of it. We'll go to the bank, get the money. We'll do whatever. We, hey, hey, we'll go to Brother Silas and borrow something. Hey, that's totally impossible for us to do it, John. You and I need to get to the place where we have a, we have, we've knocked all, we just knock all the props out. We knock all the props of support out from under us and totally commit ourselves, hey, to, to a life of faith, trusting in the Lord. And he'll take care of us, watch over us. Hey, are you there? Are you there? My favorite scripture is Psalms 118.8. Hey, hey, put no confidence in man, just trust in the Lord. You just trust in the Lord. It'll take you through, hey, it'll take you through those times when the hard times come. When your loved one passes. When you lose your job. Hey, when, when you, you get bad news, you got cancer, you got six months to live, think about it. Look at verses 4 and 5. Bring the right sacrifice. In the, in the tabernacle, in the temple days, the priest had better not, better not enter the presence of the Lord without the right sacrifice. It could mean death to him. It could mean death to him. Thank God we don't have to offer a blood sacrifice this morning. And everybody will say, yeah, thank God I don't have to do that. Think of what they had to do. All we got to do is come in here in these comfortable pews and sit down. This, uh, the heat's on, the air's on, whatever. Hey, we got it, we got it made, y'all. See, our God, the blood's already been shed. He's already taking care of that. Jesus is already taking care of that for us. Hey, you know, if you read Hebrews 10, uh, three, I think about 10 through 14, you'll find out there's some words there. It says one and once, those words, there's still a sacrifice that the people are to make they need to bring with them. And here's what your sacrifice is. It ain't your money. Although you should bring your tithes and offerings. It ain't your attendance. Although you should be in church every every possible opportunity you can. There's just one sacrifice the Lord expects from every saint to bring to church when they come into this assembly. And that's simply right here where it says the sacrifice of praise. Emphasis. Hey, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Just a couple of quick thoughts. God's house is a place of praise, y'all. When you walk in here, you ought to be praising him from the time you enter to the time you leave. And when you get home, you ought to still be praising him. We are given, we are given an invitation to come into his presence. Look what it says there. In Enter into his gates. Gates are defensive weapons and are usually closed to the outsiders. However, through the blood of Jesus, we, hey, we're no longer enemies of him. We're no longer his enemy. We're now a son of his. Okay? And the gates are, are, are hey, that were closed are now open to us. They're open wide. And we're beckoned to enter into his presence, the presence of God, and bring to him the sacrifice of praise for our salvation. If you can't do any more than thank him for nothing but your salvation, thank him for that. 
I thank him for my salvation. And if you can't thank him for yours, thank him for mine. Just thank him. Praise him. Praise God for the, hey, for salvation. Praise God for, for what he's done for you. How he's watched over you and taken care of you. Some 80 years, some 70 years, some 60 years old, some 30 and 40, or to still be praising. Hey, you got something praising for. The next thing I notice is that entered his courts with praise. Notice that it's not just, it's, hey, we're not just allowed access to the outer limits of the sanctuary, but we're invited to walk into the throne room where we meet with him. Where we're, hey, I said this morning, we're right in the throne room of God. Have you ever gone to prayer and, and thought about that? That you've got his ear? The ear of God? Not the pastor's ear. Not the assistant pastor. Not a few church members. you got God's ear. God's ear. Think about the privilege of that. Think about the honor bestowed upon you as a child of God to have God's ear. See, no wonder, no wonder the psalmist is challenging us to, to be thankful and to bless his name. We, we, we are counseled here to bring the right sacrifices when we enter into the house of God. We're told to bring the sacrifice of praise. Verse 5 gives us three reasons to praise his name. Praise God for his goodness. This is what we're told that the Lord is good. Amen. Yes, he is. This seems like a, a limited description of God, but the, the word means good, pleasant, beautiful, delightful, glad, uh, joyful, precious, correct, righteous, but it also means expensive. Everything God does is, is an expression of his goodness for us. We can praise our God because he's good, and he's good all the time, y'all. He's good all the time. Regardless of whatever's happening in life, God is good. God is good. No matter how things turn out, no matter how bad, the, how dark it gets, God is still good. We need to praise Him for His goodness. Praise Him for His, hey, for His grace. Brother Mike hit on that when he preached the other week. But think about the grace. It says His mercy is everlasting. We, we, can, we can praise God because He is constantly extending his mercy to us in our life. As you know, mercy is defined as not getting what you deserve. We live in a time when everyone wants what's coming to them. Not me. Not me. I don't want what's coming to me. But I know what's coming to me. Hey, I know what I deserve. I deserve to go to hell. I deserve to go to hell. And don't look at me funny. You do too. You deserve to go to hell too. If I got what I deserve this morning, I'd experience the undiluted wrath of God on me. An almighty God and God's wrath would be on me if I got what I deserve. Instead, God deals with me with mercy. Mercy. He holds back his wrath off of me. Why? Because over 2,000 years ago, God's son, Jesus, took my place on an old Roman cross, just like that up there. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. While he was dying there, and this morning, all of my sins, all of my sins was trans transferred from, hey, from, on, on him. God took all of his, all of my sins, your sins, all the sins of the world on him. As he was hanging there, as he was hanging there, pouring out, pouring out, hey, God was pouring out the wrath of, uh, on him, uh, on the very, his own, his own begotten son, pouring it out on his only precious, hey, begotten son. He put all this wrath toward him that day, but he saw me, and he saw you. He looked down the tunnels of time and saw you and I, and knowing one day, one day, praise God that you'd come to know Jesus because of what he did on that old rugged cross. His mercy, his mercy, God. 
Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 says, Hey, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are, listen here now, they are new every, every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. In other words, in other words, they're fresh. We get a fresh batch every day of his mercy. What a blessing. That's a good reason to praise him right there. And then lastly, let's praise God for his guarantee. It says here that truth endureth to all generations. Simply stated, while the years pile up, not a single promise of God's word will fail. Not a single one. You see, you see, God can't lie over in Hebrews 6.18. And what he has promised, hey, will be good 10,000 years from now if he, if he doesn't come back before that. When he tells you he loves you, you can count on it. When he tells you that, hey, he can save you if you'll come to him, you can count on it. When he tells you he cares for you, you can count on it. When he tells you he'll keep you saved, and he does. You don't keep yourself saved. You can't keep yourself saved. When he tells you he'll keep you saved, you can count on it. So what I'm saying, if the Lord tells you anything at all, hey, you can count on it. And that's a good reason to praise him. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Are you bringing the right things when you come to the simple? Are you bringing the right things into, the God, into God's house when you come to the simple? I wonder if the Lord's spoken to you this morning. Maybe you're not filled with him, hey, with praising him. For some reason, just going to church is more difficult now. A lot more difficult than it used to be. A lot of folks, y'all know, since the pandemic hit, haven't been back. Still locked up in their homes. We need to deal with this, this situation. If it's difficult, you need to deal with it. Hey, get it, get it nailed down today. Maybe you've never, maybe you've never been saved. And, and again, you, you want to get to know the Lord Jesus, the one of the Bible that we just talked about. You want to get to know him, okay, that one. Why don't you come, why don't you come and meet him this morning? Why don't you come and meet him this morning? I don't know your heart today, but God does. But I do know this, that some of you need to, to take a look at what you bring in the church here. And bring the right spirit. And bring the right submission. And bring the right sacrifice. Maybe you've been hanging around here a while and you, the Lord's been impressing on you that this is the place He wants you to serve. Won't you come today too? Won't you come now? Won't you do, won't you do what the Lord wants you to do, okay? The invitation's open. The invitation's open. You come now. Come now. Don't hesitate. Come now.